the greatest people, the strongest people rise out of nothing. What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani. We have right here via Zoom a very special guest. She is an author, PhD, and filmmaker. You may know her work from Netflix's hit, The Social Dilemma. We are going to be talking to her not just about The Social Dilemma, but about the latest issue that she is tackling, generational addiction, with the award-winning documentary that's making rounds right now, Our American Family. We are talking to Hallie Edelman. Hallie, thank you so much for joining us. You have a new documentary that is out right now, making its rounds in the film festival. Actually already won an award called Our American Family. Really powerful stuff talking about addiction, but not just addiction, generational addiction as an addiction generations passed down within a family. Can you just talk about what made you decide to make this documentary on such a really trying and traumatizing subject for a lot of people? Yeah, I mean, I think what what made us really step into the project was this family, honestly. They were so excited to be brave, to take off their mask, to open their their doors and their windows, you know, when most people would have clo- closed the shades. They wanted to be fearless in efforts to help other families and and to bash stigmas that are associated with addiction and substance abuse disorder. So really I have to give credit to this, this family for sparking the fire behind this project. And you're from the Philly area. This takes place in the Philly area with Philly area family. Did you know this family prior to making this documentary? Yeah, we've known, we've known each other for years before we started the film. So that really helped us build a great deep trust before we got started. Did you find any challenges in, in, the, in the making of this documentary as far as like the responsibility? Because on one hand, you, you want to, of course, raise awareness, shine a light on a, a very serious issue, especially because not everybody talks about their addictions so openly like, the, like this family did. But at the same time, you also want to res- kind of, I don't know, respect their space is, is the right phrasing, but also make sure it's not uh, being too triggering or, or traumatizing as well. So how are you able to kind of walk that line as a filmmaker? We wanted to respect them 100%. So I think what we did, which I would love to do with, which I do with all of my projects is we just showed up with a lot of love. We showed up with love, with a non-judgmental attitude. And we kept, we talked to the family every step of the way. You know, when we first started filming, it was a sensitive time. As you mentioned, you know, Nicole had that past year, Chris had said Nicole had overdosed four different times, you know? So this was something that the family had, you know, been living with this cycle kept repeating itself over and over and over again with so many families can relate to. So when we walked in, Nicole had, wasn't allowed into the family home for months prior. It was her first time being back in the family home. And it was a time where they all said like enough and enough's enough. Like we don't want addiction on center stage anymore. We've tried everything. We're totally exhausted. We're tired of this baggage that society puts on us by all this judgment and all this like, you know, negative, negative thoughts while we're already dealing with so much, like let's show people what this is like. So our approach was really just to walk in with love and keep that respect the whole way. That's fantastic. And I think you guys also did a great job throughout the film of reminding people that addiction isn't just something you can quit overnight or anything like that. I mean, it's it's a disease. You know, it, it, it is an, an actual diagnosed disease and not something that you could just easily shake off. And I thought you guys did a, a tremendous job with that. As far as what you learned in, in the making of this documentary, was there anything that kind of jumped out at you that surprised you? I'm sure you you dove headfirst into the subject, but was there anything that really surprised you that you thought, wow, you know, if we show this to say, you know, high school students, oh, there's something that they could learn that maybe I didn't initially expect? I think the biggest thing that I took away from this was just how we don't even realize how close addiction is to all of us, like whether, like so many people are dealing with addiction in their families, those who aren't don't realize that, you know, you're walking around and, and so many people, you know, are struggling and not talking about it. You know, I was found this quote that only 12% of people actually talk about it. I found out after we started working on this film that 
my cousin's husband was struggling with an opioid use disorder and I didn't know that, you know, beforehand. So just really, um, seeing that you don't know what happens behind people's people's doors. So how can we show up every day with a little bit more compassion? So would you say kind of the long-term goal of our American family is to not only raise awareness, but to get more people you know, talking about addiction, because you look at it like it's the same thing with kind of mental health, right? A lot of people ha- struggle with mental health, but these days, a lot more people are talking about it, which results in a lot more people getting help. So do you feel like that's the same hope for our American family and overall this opioid crisis? Yeah. I mean, obviously with the film, one of the things that we're committed to is making sure that other families feel like they're, they're not alone, you know, whether or not somebody's ready to share their full story or not, making sure they can see themselves, whether it's in Steven, our American family, who's like, you know, look, I I have to put Sometimes I feel like I have to put my own feelings and my own issues on the back burner while bigger things are happening with my sister. Or, you know, is it like with Linda who like learned to minimize addiction from her own childhood with her mom struggling and has to kind of make a make a shift and see things differently. So really for people to kind of start by seeing themselves in different people in the film, you know, making sure that people know that we're going to step forward and, and, and scream for you. We're going to scream for you by saying, if you're not ready to share your story, we're going to scream that you don't have, you shouldn't have to feel ashamed. Okay. If you decide that you want to speak out or you decide I want to get help, only 10% of people who are struggling with addictions are, are getting help for various reasons. But one of them is this shame piece. Um, you know, obviously there's an access piece too, which will, um, we, you know, we, we talk about a lot, as, you know, a group. And then, you know, just bashing these stigmas, making sure that people can understand that when you approach your librarian who might have someone in their family struggling, or when you approach, you know, the bus driver that you love so much, or, you know, the, the waitress in your restaurant, like you're approaching people with love. Uh, with all with all the people involved, from the stepfather to Linda to Chris to Stephen to Nicole, I mean, you, you really could relate relate a little bit to, to each one of them and, and and their respective struggles. Was was there somebody in the family that maybe you related to most that you were drawn to that you thought, man, this is this is somebody that maybe I was or I knew at some point in life? I think. Well, what's interesting is I think there was a piece of each of them that I could relate to. You know, I could understand Linda who wanted to, as a mom, fix something for her children that they needed to fix on their own. Like I, I, as a mom, it's just a pretty um, easy connection to make. You know, I could understand like Chris feeling resentment towards somebody in their family that like you love so much and you want them to get better, but they're not, you know, like I could understand Steven who's like, all right, I'm just going to kind of be quiet in this moment. So I think there's something about all of them, honestly, you know, and for me, you know, it was also refreshing to kind of see Brian throughout the film, who is like in the very beginning is like, you know, no way. Like, I don't even want you around. There's, you know, he had said there's a toxicity to having Nicole around in like a pretty, pretty blatant way, but to see him kind of transform as Nicole made progress and as she showed that she was more reliable, I mean, that was pretty awesome. So there was something about all of them that I connected with and, and, and cared about. It's hard to believe that within a couple of months of us recording this interview, it's going to be the two year anniversary of the social dilemma on Netflix, the hit documentary you made, which features all the pitfalls of social media talks about how Facebook and all these other platforms collect their data all the dangers, how it can affect families and children. Looking back at that documentary and how well it was received, are you surprised that it made such a huge impact? I'm not shocked it grew so big because it's something that impacts all of us. You know, there's these conversations that can impact so so many people are so important. And, and honestly, this filmmaking team, you know, led by Jeff Orlowski and Larissa Rhodes, they're an exceptional filmmaking team that approaches projects in a way that really brings so, so much care to the table. And for them to create this 
this film and present perspectives that are so important to to raise the question of what's happening with kids and their mental health if they're you know using social media what's happening to democracy you know are we getting fed information based on what's what is per, techno, technologically perceived as important to us like these are really important questions that they're asking and and they're trying to make change so that it can benefit future generations. So I'm not surprised because they're amazing. They've listened along the way to great experts and they're continuing to have important conversations to create impact. It's like you're, you're doing so much and a lot that is positively impacting people. Uh, what gets you going every, every day, especially when you already have such a, a massive workload, you work with children, you're an author, you have a PhD. Uh, filmmaking is obviously not an easy job, especially in tackling a lot of these sensitive subjects. What does a day in the life look like for you? Oh my God, a day in the life. <laughs> right? Well, first of all, I'm lucky enough to be talking to you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a day in my life, it's actually, it's probably crazy. I probably shouldn't let anybody see it, but it is. It's really like a nonstop drive, but to really honor our next generation. Like, you know, the biggest thing for me is how can we spark important conversations? How can we make things better tomorrow than they are today? You know, I'm a mom, I have two kids. I want them to grow up in a world that has asked hard questions and has with and has people who are genuinely trying to respect one another and make things better together. So I think part of doing that is creating work that could start important conversations and let people respect each other in the deepest way. As somebody who, who, who is a mother who has worked with kids, when you go into filmmaking or creating anything really uh, on your end, do you go about it with the thought that, okay, one day this will be read to or shown to classes? Well, I always consider my the audience for any of the projects, because, you know, I'm a former teacher. I taught elementary, I taught university. So for me, it's just deeply rooted in me to care about whatever I'm sharing with the, the people in front of me, you know, whether it's students, whether it's a film audience, you know, whether it's just a bunch of families, you know, I really care about <laughs> our world and the people living in it. So I think when you do that, you are careful and loving in your work. You, you feel good when you give back and do something positive. Yeah, and I don't even view it as giving back, honestly. I view it as like just doing what's right. Like I just want to do, show up and do what's right, you know, and create projects with care and love. I'm not always going to get it right, <laughs> but I'm going to just do my best and, and have that approach. Do you ever take a day off? No, <laughs> I don't. It's funny. There's one holiday that um, my husband got me a shirt and it said on it, do less. <laughs> so I don't really take a day off, but I do, you know, treasure moments with family and create space for, for family and, and friendships. What's the best piece of advice you give anybody looking to find success and really make a positive impact in life? Yeah, well, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but one, I would say approach your whatever you do with love and care. And then beyond that, I would say really be dig deep and find what is truest. You know, what are your talents? What how can you use everything that you have to um to have the impact that's important to you? You know, you're you're uh, amazing with interviewing people, you know, you've have all these interests in sports and films, like how can you take what would fuel you and be fun for you and put it together in a way that can, can reach people? And if not, if you can't do that, how can you approach whatever job is in front of you? You know, there are some jobs that I've had in life that, <laughs> you know, I remember I was like entering a, like a data entry person for, um, for a sports, like fantasy sports <laughs> league one time. Like, how can you just show up in the best way? And the third thing I would say is find the right team. Work with people that are gonna inspire you, that are 
better, better at doing something than you are, you know, just, just be okay with, with not knowing everything. Fantastic advice. I really appreciate the insight. Actually, one more bonus question. Is there anything you wish I did ask you in this interview? No, because I think you're amazing, but I would also <laughs> love to share with audiences that we do have for anybody who's hoping to see our American family or follow what happens next with the film. Um, we do have social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter um, and Facebook. So on Instagram and, and Facebook, it's at our American family film on Twitter. It's our Amer fam film and on, and we have a website, www.ouramericanfamilyfilm.com. And we'd love to have you as part of our family. Awesome. And where can fans find you online? Oh, so you can find me through any of those sites. You can also go to HaleyEdelman.com if you want like just way too much wacky information <laughs> about me or also waypastbooks.com if you're interested in the work for children and the book series. <laughs> 